Amen. Let's rise up together as we make our declaration of increase in this year of increase. Are you ready? Say with me, I confess today that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. In Him, I have life, His abundant life. The Lord is my light and strength. As He is, so has He made me. By His Spirit, I increase in word and in wisdom, in faith and in favor. The Lord has said, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply your seed. So I can boldly say, my God shall increase me more and more. What I place in God's hands grows into overflow. Though I begin small, my end shall greatly increase. In this year of increase, I grow in grace and in strength to be all that God wants me to be. In Jesus' name, Amen! And you may be seated in God's presence and it's a great joy to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. I trust that you're doing well. We had a downpour from last night to uh, this morning and uh, uh, one on one level the rain is a blessing. Another blessing is uh, another level, it's a challenge. And uh, I'm grateful that you were able to make it uh, to be in church this morning. Um, on Friday, coming Friday, we have our overflow service. It's a night of extended praise and worship to be in the house of the Lord, to be in the presence of the Lord. And I just want to encourage everybody to be here. Time spent as we worship the Lord is the most precious time you want to have in your Christian life. So just come, let's worship together, and let's let's allow the, the, the heavens to be open over our lives. So coming Friday, 6 o'clock, overflow service starts in this place. Well, um, we are still talking about life in the spirit, and this is part number 15 of life in the spirit. And I've been talking about the spirit's uh, weapons, and uh, I just looked at the context of it. I think it, I needed to break them down a little bit more. So uh, I'm doing part B of the spirit's weapons, and I'm going to talk about two of the part of the armor of God, and next week I will do the other two that is left. And so, the Spirit's weapons, part B of life in the Spirit, number 15. We go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 to 17. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So there are in all six items in this armor. Of course, in verse 18, uh, we are told to, including all of that, to pray with all manner of prayer. But six items in the armor of the believer. And we've talked about Two already, we've talked about the belt of truth, we've talked about the breastplate of righteousness, and today we're going to talk about verse 15 and, and verse 16. Verse 15 says, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Shod feet, that is standing in readiness to announce the good news or the gospel, having shod your feet with the preparation 
of the gospel of peace. There is a little uh, note here that this is the uh, only piece of the armor where the name of the armor is not mentioned, but uh, its function is mentioned. So uh, we have belt, we have breastplate, we have sword, we have shield, we have helmet, uh, but this one doesn't talk about the name of the armor. Uh, it should have been sandal or shoe, but it talks about the function, the function, uh, preparation uh, to announce the good news. But it says having your feet short. And that phrase simply means uh, having a sandal on or a shoe on. And in a Roman soldier's armor, uh, he will of course have all the things we have considered earlier, but they will also have sandals. They didn't wear shoes as we know them now, but they were what we will today call sandals. And, and that would be the footwear. And usually under the footwear, there will be spikes uh, so that when the soldier was moving, their feet will be stable. They will not stumble. And also when they were defending a ground, they would be able to dig in and stand firm. So that was how the soldier's sandals were designed. And Paul is alluding to that and says that we must have our feet short. In other words, our feet covered uh, with the preparation or readiness to announce the good news of God. This is one of the difficult pieces of the armor of the of God to understand. Because instantly, uh, when you look at it, you wonder, in what way is this an armor for the believer? And I think that is why the Bible tells us more about the function rather than just the element, the shoe. It's telling us about a function. But even that, it doesn't easily come out as, as making us understand what this place in, in our spiritual warfare, how does uh, this announcing the good news uh, help us to win spiritual warfare? And that's what we're going to explore uh, here. Now, when we look at it, we may instantly get the impression that uh, this passage or this piece of armor is about preaching the good news or going to preach God's word or propagate God's word or witness for Christ. And there is, there is a truth in it at a certain level, but it goes a little beyond that. Now, in order to understand this in Ephesians 6, uh, 15, we have to go a little back into the Old Testament to Isaiah chapter 52, uh, verse 7. Because Isaiah 52 verse 7 is the basis of what Paul is talking about in Ephesians 6, 15. And Isaiah 52 verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Now, if you compare the two verses, you will find that there are similarities here. Uh, feet, good news, peace. These are all mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. So there is similarity. Both verses are talking about someone on his feet making a proclamation. Someone on his feet making a proclamation. That is a similarity. In Isaiah... The one who is making the proclamation is running. Is running. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of those who proclaim the good news. It's a runner who is out there announcing, uh, making an announcement. But in Ephesians, there is no running. Because Ephesians is very clear, it's about standing. So how does then something that happens with a runner in Isaiah chapter 52 uh, verse 7... Uh, then work with something that is about standing in Ephesians 6, 15. And the background is very uh, similar. In ancient times, when there was a war, uh, there will be 
uh, when there was an outcome, especially when there was a victory, one of the soldiers will be sent to go and announce, we've won, we've won. And in Isaiah it says, our God reigns. And when they say, our God reigns, it means God has defeated the enemy. We have won, we have the victory. So Isaiah says that there are those who run, and when they run, they run with a message of victory. They run to announce the good news. Now, Ephesians is telling us that there is something we must do in spiritual warfare. And in Isaiah's case, the person runs to announce the good news. In Ephesians, the person stands to announce the good news. Are you seeing that? So Ephesians is saying, instead of waiting to run to proclaim good God's good news, in, in, in Ephesians, we are standing to proclaim God's good news. So stand and proclaim God's good news. That's what Ephesians is, stand, is telling us. So what has this got to do with our spiritual warfare? Now remember I said that Paul is using a natural analogy to teach a spiritual lesson. So if you look at all the armor of God mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6, really I think this is the most important of all. Because the, the whole effort of Ephesians 6 is that we must stand. Everybody say stand. Now, we don't stand, of course, with our waist. We don't stand with our heads. We don't stand with our chest. So, the breastplate of righteousness, although it helps you to stand, you don't stand with your chest. You don't stand with a helmet of salvation. We don't stand with a sword in your hand. The only part that stands is the feet. So, the most important armor is the one that stays standing on the feet when the enemy is coming. And so in the Roman soldier's armor, his, his sandals are there, there are spikes in, and when the pressure is coming from the enemy, the soldier must make sure he doesn't fall. Because if he falls, he's vulnerable. If he lies down, he'll be destroyed. He has to stand. Somebody stay stand. And how does he stand? If you link it with Isaiah, then he's standing by making a proclamation. He's standing by making a proclamation. So this armor is designed to repel pressure. Pressure. And the attack of the enemy. It repels attacks and announces God's victory. The pressures of the enemy come against us in different forms. It can come in attacks from demonic forces, the pressures of this world. And in warfare, we must stand. Stand to do what? Stand to announce the good news. So what does it mean? In the Old Testament, the soldier goes to announce the victory after the battle is over. We've won the victory. He goes running, running, running. Our God raised. We've won. We've won. Paul says that's not how we win our spiritual battles. We don't wait till the battle is over to announce our victory. He says, whilst the enemy is pushing against you, you stand firm and you announce, our God reigns. We are on the winning side. We are winning. And we have overcome. So in spiritual warfare, you don't wait for the end of the battle to declare the victory. You declare the victory in the midst of the battle. And that is what the believer does. Because many times when the enemy is coming against you, he's trying to push you down. 
pressures are pushing you down. Economy is pushing you down. Uh, there, there's all kinds of sickness is trying to push you down. And it's very easy at that time to fall and say, I don't think I can make it again. I don't think I will overcome. I don't think this thing will work out well. I don't think I will be healed from this disease. I don't think God will give me the victory. He says, that's not how we stand. We stand by announcing and making a proclamation. And that is how we stand in spiritual warfare. We stand to announce the victory of the Lord. So whilst you are standing, you are saying, because Christ has forgiven me, I am forgiving. Because Christ died for me, I am alive in him. Because Christ has raised me up, I am up and I am not down. Because Christ has delivered me, I am delivered. Because Christ lives in me, the greater one lives in me. Because Christ carried my infirmities, I am healed. Because Christ has blessed me, I am blessed. Because he became poor for me, I am rich. Because I'm seated in Christ, I am above all principality and power. And this you are saying to the hearing of the one who is trying to pull you down. And that is how we put on the feet short, ready prepared to declare the good news of God's peace. God is winning this battle. Our God reigns. We are coming through this with a song. We are coming through this with a testimony. We are not falling down on this battlefield. We are returning from this battlefield with a song, with a victory, with a shout of the Lord. I don't know what battle you are in. I don't know what is pushing against you. I came here to announce to you, your feet is short with the preparation of the good news of God. You better declare your victory. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I'm winning this one. Oh, say it like you mean it. Say, I'm winning this one. Say, I am winning this one. I'm coming out of here with a victory, with a song, with deliverance, with favor, with a turn around. I will not fall. I will not die. I will not be destroyed. I will not fail. I am winning this one. That is your weapon. That is your weapon. That is your armor. That is how we overcome. That is how we stand. We don't stand by grinding our teeth. We stand by making a pronouncement. Making an announcement. Making a declaration. Making a proclamation. That our God reigns. He reigns. God rules in the affairs of men. Man may think he is mighty, but God rules in the affairs of men. There is no way we can see out of this situation, but our God reigns. And we are coming out of this with victory. Whatever struggle you are going through, Whatever pressure is pushing you down, is pushing your family down, pushing your children down, pushing your finances down. You have to stand on your feet and announce the victory of the Lord. And that is how we repel the attacks of the enemy. When the enemy comes with pressure against us, we stand on our feet, short with the good news of God. And we declare his victory. The feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace enables us to remain firmly grounded in what Christ has done for us. We remain firmly grounded in what Christ has done for us. We announce his victory. We announce his triumph. We announce that he reigns over every situation. So Paul says, when you're fighting principalities and powers, put on God's truth. Put on God's righteousness and declare God's victory ahead of time. Declare God's victory ahead of time. 
Declare God's victory ahead of time. Don't wait for the battle to end before you proclaim the victory. You proclaim the victory in the heat of the battle. Whilst you are standing, you proclaim. And he says, when you do that, that's how you stand. That's how you don't fall. That's how you don't become a victim. Talking defeat is the easiest thing in life. Especially when you are an African or a Ghanaian. Talking defeat is the easiest thing. Life is hard. We can't make it. We will die. You. This thing will kill us. It's the easiest thing. You, you, we tweet it. We Facebook it. We WhatsApp it. Just take an audit of all the messages on your WhatsApp platform. All the tweet messages you read. All the Facebook messages you read. All the Instagram posts you, you follow. And audit the language. Audit it. All the radio stations you listen to. All the TV stations you listen to. All the preachers you listen to. Audit it. And see how much of it is telling you that you will have the victory. Just, just, just do an audit. Each one is telling you to fall. Each one is telling you lie down. Each one is telling you you have lost. Each one is, not each one, but most of them are telling you lie down. It can't be done. Lie down. Give up. Surrender. That's what you are hearing every day. And it's the easiest thing to fall down and surrender. But standing is hard. Proclaiming God's word in the heat of the battle is the most, most difficult thing to do because your senses and everything you see tells you you've lost the battle. But God's word says you have won the battle. And you have to discipline yourself to stand and announce the victory of the Lord. And that is the most crucial armor of the believer because this one is what engages you to stand. Then Paul says, after you have done that, I like what he says in the next verse. He says, above all, everybody say above all. Above all means, in addition to all that you have done, in addition to all that you have heard, above all that you've heard, you have to do something. Taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The shield of faith. The shield of faith is a piece of God's armor that we take up. That means we hold and use. We hold and use. This is the fourth piece. It's the only piece so far, we'll get one later, but so far that you hold. You don't hold the shoe, you wear it. You don't hold the breastplate, you wear it. You don't hold the girdle of truth, you wear it. They are fixed. This one, you must apply. This one, you must apply. Hold the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And this is also the only piece of armor whose use is directly stated. So you take the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The other ones, it doesn't tell us what we do. We deduce from the scripture what it does. But here it states clearly the shield of faith. Everybody say shield of faith. Take it up. Use it. Now, what is the shield of faith doing? The shield of faith is quenching all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. It's always good to understand the context within which passages in the Bible are written because then you can apply it to now. In those days, uh, the, the technology at that time, there were no guns. There were no bullets, there was no bazooka, there was no AK-47, no pistol, nothing. 
So the equivalent to a gun, uh, arrows had been invented earlier. And so arrows were, were used. But the Romans had a, a peculiar way of using the arrow. They would uh, have tar, what we call kota. You dip the tip of the arrow. The tip of the arrow normally has a fabric around it. And you dig the tip of the arrow into kota and set the tip on fire. So that when you shoot the arrow, not only does it pierce, it also burns. The fiery dart. So that's what Paul calls the fiery dart. The arrow with fire at its tip. So Paul is saying that the enemy, Satan, is shooting fiery darts. And, and the reason why the Romans invented the fiery darts is not just against the soldier, but against his surrounding. And, and so normally they would shoot a fiery dart into a town and, and, you know, they didn't have uh, aluminum roof. They had thatch roof. So the fiery dart will hit your house, the roof of your house, and start burning your house. It will f- hit your storehouses and start burning your storehouses. So the, the fiery dart may not even hit you. Sometimes it hits things around you, and sometimes it is aimed at you. And so the way to, con- con- to confront the fiery dart is to have a shield. The normal shield was made out of wood. But wood can burn. If the fiery dart hits it, then your shield is burning. So the shield at that time had materials, sometimes of hard leather, a particular kind of leather that can stop fire. So when the fiery dart hits the shield with the leather on top of it, it quenches the fire, so the fire doesn't burn. So that's what Paul has in mind when he says, above all, take the shield of faith by which you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So Satan is throwing fiery darts at you, and he's throwing fiery darts at your, in your home, firing darts in your business, fiery darts all around you. If he doesn't get you, he wants to burn everything around you. And that is why the shield of faith is not stationary. The shield of faith moves. So when he hits, you raise your shield and you quench the fiery darts. The shield of faith allows you to move and quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Because already you have the breastplate of righteousness, which is fixed. But this one moves to be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So that's what Paul has in mind when he talks about quenching all the fiery darts of the wicked one. But he talks about the shield of faith. Everybody say faith. Whose faith? Is it my faith? Not really, because the armor of God is not about me, it's about God. So if it says truth, it is God's truth. If it says uh, good news, it is God's news, God's good news. If it says faith, it cannot be my faith. It has to be God's faith. So I have to take God's faith. I have to operate faith the way God operates it. Does God have faith? Does God operate in faith? That's a very deep theological question. I, I may take a long time to answer. But the short answer is yes. So I won't give you all the background because I have to go into a lot. The short answer is yes. And how does that work? You remember in, in Mark chapter 11, you, if you don't remember, I'm telling you, Mark chapter 11, <laughs> Jesus cursed a fig tree. And the fig tree did not die instantly. He cursed it and, and moved on. He didn't watch to say, I've cursed you, what has happened? Let me see how it happened. He just cursed it and moved on. Next morning he comes, coming by the same road, going back to Jerusalem, and uh, his disciples say, Lord, the fig tree you cursed is died from the roots. And Jesus said to his disciples in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, have faith in God. 
And then verse 3 says, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in heart, believe those things he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. But verse 22, have faith in God. Now, if you read that phrase in Greek, the, 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 the Greek doesn't have in. The in is put there to make sense of what the Greek is saying. But literally it means, have faith God. Have faith God. Have faith God. Now, if you are speaking English and someone says, have faith God, and you say, have, what was have faith God? So literally, uh, it means have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. So, so Jesus is telling them, what I just did is the God kind of faith. And that is the shield we are taking up. We have the God kind of faith. Everyone say God kind of faith. So Jesus says, if you have the God kind of faith, you shall say to this mountain, be removed and it will be removed. You cannot do it with your kind of faith. But if you operate by the God kind of faith, then it will happen. How does the God kind of faith function? Romans chapter 4 verse 17. I have one minute, 14 seconds. <laughs> Romans four seventeen. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. How does God's faith function? He calls the things which be not as though they did. When Jesus saw the fruit, uh, the, the, the fig tree, he didn't curse it by saying, I curse you. That's not what he said. He says, no one eats fruit from you again. From this time, nobody will eat fruit from you. Then the next day, the tree died. That's the God kind of faith. It calls the things which be not as though they were. And God is saying when you are in spiritual warfare, in addition to announcing that our God reigns, you have to take up the shield of faith because you are also going to call the things which be not as though they are. That's how we win our battles in spiritual warfare. We call the things which be not as though they are. When you are weak, you don't say, oh, I am weak. When you are weak, you say, I am strong. God says to Abraham, a man with no child, old man with no child, and says, you are the father of many nations. What was he doing? Calling the things which be not as though they were. So when the fiery darts of the enemy comes against Abraham, he's always saying, I am the father of many nations. When he goes to places and they ask him, how many children do you have? None. What is your name? Father of many nations. The shield of faith quenching all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So God is saying, the enemy is going to throw fiery darts at you. Fiery darts to destroy you. And when those thoughts come into your mind, you have to take up the shield of faith. And you have to stop what is being said so it will not travel. That is why sometimes when people say some things about you, you have to instantly raise the shield of faith and stop it. Somebody says, you know, your family, your family, uh, we, uh, uh, your family witches will destroy you. Instantly lift up the shield of faith and say, the Lord is my strength. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Don't allow the fiery darts of the wicked one to pierce your armor and burn you.
It may not burn you, but it may burn your father, your family. You have to lift the shield of faith around your children. You have to lift the shield of faith around your property. You have to lift the shield of faith around everything that is important to you. And how do you do that? You call the things which be not as though they were. Are you following me? I'm speaking this way because our world is going through hard times. And our nation is going through hard times. But I am not going through hard times. Ghana is going through hardship. But I am not going through hardship. I lift the shield of faith. And I declare this is my most prosperous season in my life. This is my season of harvest and abundance and overflow. There may be war in Ukraine. There may be COVID-19 and it's a fair, but me, I lift the shield of faith. And I stand in my shoes and I declare my God reigns and no weapon form against me shall prosper. I will prosper. I will make it. I will overcome. I will be the head. I will not be the tail. I will not fall on this battleground. I will not fall on this battleground. No matter the pressure, we stand firm with the shield of faith. And that is how Paul says you win your spiritual warfare. Because the fiery death of the wicked one is when the wicked one comes and says, Has God said? Do you think it will happen? Do you, can you believe the Bible? Is the Bible true? You can't believe the Bible, oh. You can't believe the Bible, oh. When he comes with those words, you have to yield, lift up the shield of faith. God has said it. Twice I have heard it. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. You have to live the shield of faith. You have to live the shield of faith. Sometimes you attack your mind with all kinds of notions. These days, young people are facing science and scientific this and you know, what about that and what about that and all kinds of things trying to undermine your faith in God's word. That is the fiery dart of the enemy. If he gets you to yield, you are gone. We stand in faith. We stand proclaiming the victory of the Lord. Somebody say, my God reigns. Say, my God reigns. Say, my God reigns. Say, my God reigns. Say, I am winning. I am winning this battle. I am winning this battle. I have won already. I am the head and not the tail. I have in abundance. I have in abundance. I am a supplier of wealth unto other people. I give to them. I support them. I support the needy. I am not the needy. I support the needy. I am not the needy. I support the needy. I am not the needy. I support the needy. That is your shield of faith. That is your shield of faith. And you take the shield of faith above all, on top of the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. And that is how you're going to win this battle. And so I speak and declare over you as the flock God has given to me. You are entering the best season of your life. You are entering the greatest season of your life. You are entering a season of overflow and abundance in every way. Nothing will be lost. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. broken. Walk in the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's be seated. We're going to receive our project's offering and the band will minister to us 
as we give our offering to the Lord.